Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Hutchinson City Council meeting for Thursday, December 19th, 2019. Approve the council agenda and any agenda additions or corrections. Uh, Mayor and Council, I don't have any additions and or corrections tonight. I'll make a motion to approve it as presented. Second. Motion by Chad, second by Mary to approve the agenda. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Invocations from Riverside Church. Good evening. Okay. Hey, council members, Pastor Arnold here. Hey, let's bow our heads and pray. Father, we just invoke your presence right now in this council and all the discussions that are taking place here right now. We ask for your wisdom over the council members. We ask for your guidance. Pour out your anointing and your spirit. Fill this place right now with your presence. We commit this council meeting and the discussions into your hand. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Next, the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Recognitions of gifts, donations, and community service to the city. Does anybody have anything tonight? All right, we have a couple of resolutions under there. Uh, can we do those yeah, both like together, Pat? Yeah. We have resolution number 15134, resolution accepting a $100 donation from Russell and Lorraine Erickson for the Law Enforcement Memorial Park. And resolution number 15135, resolution accepting $25 donation from Thomas Kennedy for the Law Enforcement Memorial Park. Make a motion to approve both of them. Second. Motion by Chad, second <coughs> by Dave to approve both resolutions. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Uh, we have uh, public comment, citizens addressing the council. Uh, Chief Gifferson. I believe you have a new officer to introduce to us. You forewarned them too, right? Yeah. <laughs> Good evening, Mayor and Council. Um, I get, as you said, I just appearing before you tonight to introduce our most recent hire. Uh, his name is Taylor Fenrick. Um, comes to us with a number of years of experience, so that uh, is a nice benefit for us. Um, with Taylor's hiring, we are finally back at full strength again. So we'll hope to keep it that way for a while. At least a month or two, right? So. Yeah, at least a month or two. <laughs> um, Taylor. Taylor, why don't you step up? Say your where, where, where did you come from, Taylor? Where did I come from? I yes. grew up in Litchfield. Okay. Yep. Yep. Graduated, you were a dragon. I was huh? a dragon. Yeah, I was around with those basketball teams were winning state championships. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Touche. Yeah. So. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sounds good. Nope. So, All right. Yeah. So. Welcome. Welcome. Thank, Welcome you. Aboard. Thank you. Happy to be here. Thank you. Thanks. Thank Thanks. Thanks for your time. Welcome. <laughs> Approval of minutes. We have regular meeting minutes of December 10th, 2019, and truth and taxation hearing of December 5th, 2019. I'll make a motion to approve both of those. I will second that. Motion by Mary, second by Chad to approve both uh, minutes. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Consent agenda. This will be done with one motion unless <coughs> somebody pulls something off for discussion. Uh, a is approval of issuing short-term gambling license to the 3M Club on April 14th and September 12th of 2020. B is approval of issuing short-term gambling license to the Crow River Cutters 
on January 31st and February 1st of 2020. And claims and appropriation and contract payments. I'll make a motion to approve. And uh, I think that's the shortest consent agenda I've seen in 11 <laughs> years. <laughs> so You're welcome. <laughs> thanks, buddy. Just the season. Yeah. Well, I'll second that then because it's a short one. Yeah. Motion by Chad, second by myself to approve the agenda. All in, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Uh, we have uh, communications, requests, and petitions. We have an update from Betsy Price about the River Song Committee. Good evening. Hey there. Hi, Betsy Price, um, 17614, 240th Street, Hutchinson. And uh, I just wanted to be able to come tonight and um, one, mostly say thank you to the city uh, for all the support that we've gotten for every year. Last year was our 11th year. And uh, <coughs> we had a successful year. Um, we had 15 different bands on both stages over two days, Friday night and Saturday. Um, we had approximately 55 different sponsors supporting us during the year. And for the first time, it takes about 200 volunteers for the weekend. And uh, I've noticed several of you that are there volunteering for us, or at least um, out enjoying the music. <laughs> but this year we hit 97% filled, and that's the first time we've ever done that. So. That was, um, it was a really nice accomplishment. We met our budget. Um, we're always looking for more attendees. That never, that always happens, but we met our budget. Um, we had a, a really successful year. Already in the planning stages for next year, it'll be July 17 and 18. And uh, the talent team is working hard developing the list. It'll be all Minnesota performers for next year for our first time. We've had a focus on that, but next year will be all Minnesota. So uh, they're working on all that. We're getting all of our grants written, everything going. So I wanted to come and say thank you. We appreciate everything that the city does. We have great partners here. And I have a check towards our permanent uh, stage. So I wanted to leave that to you. And um, that's it. Any questions? Yeah, were you going to announce the headliners tonight on camera here? <laughs> <laughs> We will announce in February. Perfect. <laughs> we will announce in February. And uh, we also, as part of River Song, Music in the Park is uh, already in the planning stages as well with Historic Hutchinson. So that'll be running for it. It's going to be a little shorter this year because of construction and everything, but it will be in the park. And uh, so we'll have that running for seven weeks over the summer. So. Yeah. The crowds have been good Thank for you. that. Thank you. Since Pardon? you guys took it over, the crowds have been good. We went to several last year. It was a lot of fun. So. The, yeah. yeah. Music in like the, the music in the park. Yeah. 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 It's been going well. It has been. Yeah. It has been going well. And um, there's a small committee of us that work on it, and um, we enjoy it. And it's nice to see anywhere between, oh, I think our lowest was uh, just under 300, and we had one, one week with over uh, four and a quarter. Yeah. So still continues to draw, and uh, so we still have more performers and more social um, hosts that we, than we can fit. So that's a good thing. Great. All right. Anything Great. else? Yeah. No? Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Betsy. Betsy. Uh, we have uh, uh, members of the Civil Air Patrol here, so I'm going to move down to new business. Uh, <coughs> Camp Craig development agreement between the Civil Air Patrol and the City of Hutchinson. Uh, thank you, Mayor and Council. Uh, I believe it was in September when we first started talking about this, and so to get to this point already is uh, is beneficial. I, well, it's, it's surprising to, that we've gotten this far this fast and, and a lot of it is really um, the beneficial relationship that we've had with CAP. They have a number of folks um, that are uh, on their 
in their command structure that have a lot of experience in these different things and even Kevin tonight who's here with us uh, has done developer agreements in the past and, and things like that. Um, there was a question that came up regarding uh, you know kind of what's expected to be there at the uh, at the site itself this is just really a sketch plan um, you can see a hangar in the lower left side there uh, barracks and classroom dining facility uh, caretaker area and then a, a garage and John can mm -hmm. can you excuse me can you say what the colors are and so because sure. it's kind of hard it's yeah the blue the blue is the roof of the building uh, and then the uh, green is an area that they'll have for uh, physical training, basically just a athletic field. And then uh, we have parking and the apron and taxi lane coming to um, the existing taxi way on the airport. So I think it's important to know this is purely conceptual at this time. A absolutely. So. The, yeah, it's just a sketch plan at this point, and, but it kind of gives you a little perhaps a little bit of feel of what kind of a facility they're thinking about at this point. So um, there was one change from the, that uh, was discussed from the uh, copy of, of the agreement that you have, and that was to add that language in, in uh, six or seven F uh, related to obviously contingent upon receipt of the um, appropriation from the state of Minnesota. Obviously, they get, they'll have to have some money in hand before they can actually do a project. So this agreement helps them get to that point, and it helps us to make sure that, um, you know, everybody's ready to go. So um, that's really the only change from the copy that's in, um, in, your, in your packets. So... I'd like to invite uh, Kevin up if he'd like to say anything about the project or kind of where we're at now and what's next and kind of what, what the idea is in the future. Mr. Mayor, uh, my name is Kevin Dunlevy and I'm a real estate attorney in Minneapolis and I do, uh, I'm also the wing legal officer which is a pro bono um, thing that I do for Civil Air Patrol. And you like flying into our airport, don't yeah, you? I, I do. I've, I've come here for the pancake breakfast before. <laughs> <laughs> and for Civil Air Patrol. Yeah. They have a pork chop dinner. At the <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I've done that. Um, so anyway, if, if, if there's any questions, I, uh, we, we have a $3.5 million appropriation from the state. And we have like three years to spend it. And we, um, we have to provide them with uh, invoices for the work that we're doing. It's like a grant process and we're doing that right now with the, with the uh, like architectural drawings and things like that, engineering. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's the stage that we're at with the state. Mm -hmm. Can you mention, it's <coughs> called Craig? Camp um, Craig, yes. Craig? Yeah. What's the... Will, Will Craig the um, and his wife were both members of Civil Air Patrol, and they died recently in a car accident uh, in the Twin Cities. They got mowed down by, I think they were behind a semi, and a truck ran into them from behind. And so they got, I mean, it was probably instant, but that's that's who it's named after. Mm -hmm. Sound like they were involved in this project a little bit? Uh, I... I believe so. Uh, our main, the, the, the main, what I would call the project officer is the, the, the lead person for this is uh, Bruce Anthony, and he's a retired engineer. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because I was doing a real estate project in the Twin Cities, and it turned out he'd worked on it, on the, on the engineering on that before he retired. Mm -hmm. So it's a small world. Yeah. <laughs> so. What's the time frame, assuming? We move forward with this tonight. I mean, what's the expected time frame for kind of the next steps, I guess, with the, the project? Or it's going to be heavily dependent on the state. Uh, we're, you know, we're we're we have to finish up the um, the grant applications. It just, we have to make basically a draw request or an application for a payment with the state, and it's going to be heavily dependent on how quickly they provide the funds. The funds the funds are already appropriated. Um, by the legislature, 
but how quickly the Department of Aeronautics at MnDOT sends the money is, a, is something I don't really have any control sure. over. That's fine. I wasn't sure if there was a specific date or time. I mean, we're going to move it as quickly as possible because we, we, we want this facility. This will be a much better facility than anything we've got anywhere in the state for, for our uh, members. Um, just a little bit about how the reviews, you know, uh, Mr. Anthony, myself, have gone back and forth umpteen times about this. Um, we brought it out to the airport commission and talked about um, any issues there. Um, Mr. Sabora has taken a look at it and had a couple of uh, changes that were, um, that he recommended. Um, obviously, right towards the end here, Kevin and I have had some conversations about um, adding this particular um, this particular piece of the language. So I, I'm pretty confident that we're at a point where um, we've laid things out and we're re we're ready to kind of take the next steps. Um, obviously, uh, you know we've talked already about the water and sewer project uh, earlier um, this year. So. I think we're ready to go on our end, and, and uh, you know now if we get this agreement in place, I think it, it gives everybody a little bit more comfortable uh, to you know for those guys to keep going down the road of design and and for us to m get involved in, in some of the design review and those kinds of things, uh, so we can address any issues that might pop up as soon as we possibly can. So um, uh, the only thing I would add to that is. Um, this is part of my job is I have to get contracts signed by national uh, C civil air patrol is a federally chartered chartered 501 C three corporation. And so the people in Minnesota, my boss, the wing commander or me, the legal officer, we don't have authority to sign any contracts. So, so presuming the city signs it, then somebody sends me a copy electronically, then I'll send it to the general counsel's office down in um, mm -hmm. Alabama at the Air Force Base where the Civil Air Patrol's headquarters. And then they'll get the um, authorized officers to sign it. I think that'd be a nice flight down there, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, about this time of year. In winter. I, I turned down a flight to go down to the Cessna factory to pick up two brand new Cessnas. Yeah because I didn't have the time to do it, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. Got to make time. I could only fly one of them. Yeah. <laughs> so how long does that process take from the time you get it, it goes there, it comes back? It's very quick. I can get it usually in a couple of days. Oh. It's, it's, it's pretty quick because um, I work with the paralegal, and then she, she gets it signed, and she sends it back, and it's pretty quick. Mm -hmm. I have a couple of questions, if mm -hmm. I may. Um, you know, it's in the beginning, it talks about the hangar and the other buildings, the training mm -hmm. center. Mm -hmm. But through the language, there's a couple of places. One, it talks about certificate of insurance must be provided to adequately protect the CAP and the city during construction of the hangar. That'll be something that the general counsel's office in Washington, D.C. will get. I, I get those all the time for, for I mean, leases. It just talks about the hangar. It doesn't <clears throat> talk about... The rest yeah. of the facility, and that's my okay. question. Okay, interesting. Should yeah. it be yeah. hangar? It should be the whole building. It should be the, the training whole center. facility. Yeah. yeah, or maybe in the beginning, it's you know, hangar refers to right. built. Yeah, facilities. So yeah. yeah, I think it's a kind of a euphemism that people refer to CAP buildings as hangars, but mm -hmm. they're oftentimes more than that. And so, mm -hmm. um, the the insurance certificate would cover the whole property, the whole right. building. I'm just looking at it from this agreement. But yeah. I'll point that out when I send it to National yeah. to make sure that that happens. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, same with um, in the termination part of it. It says if the hangar is destroyed. Yeah, right. Again, it, it should be the, shouldn't it be the facility majority whatever. of the... Right, right. That it should be both build, or buildings or whatever, the, however you want to say that. I think, I think what know. Steve's getting at, there's yeah. portions of the agreement where it talks about yeah. the hangar and the yeah. train facility. Yeah. And then there's other portions where it just says hangar. Right. So Steve's question is, 
yeah so <clears throat> is it yeah. is it supposed to be it, it's everything the yeah whole and i think that's the facility. understanding that everybody had but it might be just a matter of putting something along those lines right in the beginning um, i don't know if that's a, if yeah. the hangar is a defined term we may may want yeah. to make it a defined term to cover yeah. the whole yeah, yeah. The that, whole that's property. probably the easier way to do um the, the other thing is I, I, as a development agreement, like this is like the purchase agreement or, you know, like this is the initial agreement and I, and I expect what will happen is that there will be a, le a lease yes. after the building is constructed right. and, and then sure. some of this, some of the stuff like the insurance certificate, that will be part of the lease and yeah. Yeah. those types of, some of those types of things will be dealt with in the lease. And I, right. Correct. Yeah. And so we'll probably actually start working on the actual operation operating lease, you know, once we, you know, there's there's some plans in place. It, it takes a little bit of time for them to uh, do some planning and, and get that stuff lined up, but that'll be running concurrently with um, with that also to define Air the operating lease. Airport leases are my biggest job in Solar Air Patrol. Yeah. That's sure. and I don't mind doing that. That's yeah. not a problem. Yeah. A lot of that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and the last thing is something I looked at this afternoon, so I apologize if I didn't share it with you earlier, John and Mark. But <coughs> you know, I was wondering about, you know, through it, we're not charging any lease until, you know, the you get the Correct. Um, certificate of occupancy. Right. And so there's protection for the CAP, but really isn't anything for the city. You know, you have two years to get the seat or certificate of occupancy. Correct. Yes. Um, but, and I think it's going to happen, and I want it to happen, but who knows? You know, you got the state involved, but uh, what if it doesn't happen within that? And we're going to be investing in water and sewer lines and you know, 335,000, I think, is what the estimate was. Um, sure. Could there be something added that um, if the certificate of occupancy isn't um, awarded within those two years that, you know, the city has the option to renegotiate? Or mm -hmm. I don't know yeah. what the yeah. terminology is, right. but um, that you know, those public improvements would have to be paid back. And again, or, that's or just in the... Along. In, yeah, I, I get what you're saying, yeah. And yeah. I look at, like, Cobblestone Hotel, mm -hmm. and I looked at the uh, development agreement that we did on that, and that was some of the language there. So there was some protection for the city's part of it as yeah, well. Yeah, and, and I think really, you know, looking at what um, the, the actual assessment would be, you know that the third of that cost of the service lines um, when I've been talking to Kent about it we haven't we haven't knocked on doors yet because yeah. we didn't know this agreement but there's a very high likelihood we'll be able to have a couple of those properties connect that are on the south side of the road which would help help everybody um, so I think I think uh, you know I would like to charge ahead and think that, you know, hopefully we can ha have some of that lined up. And my thought process is, is that basically if, if they're working with the state and the state can't do something, there's no project, mm -hmm. right? And we're going to know that before we s sling dirt. Should in be something yeah. like we're not... I don't know, right. Mark. I'm looking towards you. What's yeah. how? Do, how do we protect ourselves a little bit there? Well, I mean, just based off of what John said, I mean, you could add language that yeah. uh, none of the improvements are going to be made until, until assurances are obtained yeah. from the state that there's going to be a project. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. That. Are you okay? Yeah. And no, that's fine. It doesn't yeah. bother me. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I, I, the, from an engineering perspective, I don't know what the timing of the improvements will be, but I can tell you this. Mm -hmm. So, so we went to the legislature and we asked them to give us this money and we were targeting South St. Paul as where we we're going to do it. And then we ran into too much opposition from local government and, um, and neighbors and so on. And so that's the main reason that we're not 
there anymore. But we had to go back to the, first we went to the legislature, we got the appropriation, and that said, South St. Paul. Then after we dealt with the city and we couldn't make it work, then we went back to the legislature and they said, okay, any airport in Minnesota. And that's where we're at right now. And so our thought is if we run out of time on this development, we can go back and get them to give us more time. That's, I mean, I, I, I can't promise that we can do that, but it's a high probability assumption that we'll be able to do it. So really, I guess, you know, to address Steve's concerns, there's two things that the council can do. You could uh, approve the agreement with those two conditions. One, you know, referencing the hangar and the facilities and then that, that there's not going to be any city in investment until the, you know, from the state. insurance from the state, or you can table it until that language gets put back into it. So I'm fine kind of with moving it forward, you know, mm -hmm. if, if okay. you're okay with including those two things in there. I don't, I don't have a problem with that. I mean, we're not going to go forward if we don't get the money. Yeah. So yeah, sure. I don't yeah. see why the city right. should. Yeah, exactly. Right. I don't know what the timing is going to be, but right, we're, right. we're going to know fairly soon yes. if the city, if the, excuse me, if the state is going to fund our first um, grant request because we're, that's already, I think we've already sent it in. Perfect. So we and should I, have a fairly good idea fairly soon. And I would also know it's actually the, th and the third change too. That yeah, was. And, and the one that <clears throat> we oh, talked about. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, <clears throat> so if the council is comfortable with moving forward, I would recommend that you approve it with those three, mm -hmm. with those three changes. Mm -hmm. What was the third change? Uh, it's uh, one that, that you that had. One. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Make a motion to approve with those three changes or additions, I guess mm -hmm. is the right word. I will second that. Motion by Steve, second by Chad to approve the agreement with the additions. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Thanks for coming out. Thank Thank you. Pleasure to be here. Project. Thank you. And it's such a beautiful day, and I really like the airport. <laughs> and I like this town, too. Well, I like have, town have, a have a safe flight like that. <laughs> Thank you. I'll keep my eyes open. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, guys. Uh, just discussion on council member appointments to the city boards and commissions. Um, mayor and council, and actually this was at, at a request of the mayor last year uh, to kind of bring us to this uh, council in, in kind of December of a year, every year as you guys prepare for the upcoming new year. And so I put together a memo that kind of highlights where uh, the current appointments are with uh, the standing committees, um, kind of giving you some history and where past appointments were. You know, we've had a couple <coughs> conversations about uh, a couple other um, staff committees where there's been some discussion about adding council members to that and so as I guess both the mayor and staff prepare for January mm -hmm. if there's any desire to to change up any of these committees or add things I'm, I'm assuming that well, yeah, able to ac have yeah. Some of those conversations. Ac actually the only one I've heard from was Chad and I, I did talk to Steve a little bit um, but uh, as far as I'm concerned, everybody <coughs> wants to kind of stay where they are. The only addition would be to the sustainability board that uh, Steve said that he would like to serve on. Um, otherwise, uh, most of them, I think, are kind of good. Uh, Mr. Paulson, uh, you want to give us kind of a deal on a uh, little update on, I know I've been talking to John about the sustainability board. Um, I did uh, contact, uh, I, I got two people that said that they would serve and one oh, is uh, Jeremy Carter from the oh. Utilities Commission. Oh, he's so, no good. Well, I know. <laughs> well, he whined, so. Yeah. I, <laughs> well, if he was whining, then what yeah, about it? Yeah, then uh, on, actually Andy Nissen from the water and, yeah, and lakes and deal so and me and John kind of talked about uh, some other members that uh, said that they were <coughs> kind of interested I think John Loftall is probably 
one that we would contact. And uh, John, you said you had a couple other ones that you were talking to? Yep, there were a few other people that we had reached out to um, between Gary and myself. I would made contact with a few folks from 3M as well. Um, Darren Gores is one of those. Um, he expressed interest Maybe even though he's outside of city limits. We do have spot for one at large. He's still a Hutchinson resident by address, but um, he's one that he said he'd probably be pursuing an application of interest for that. Um, I touch base with a couple other folks too that aren't able to do that because of schedules or other personal issues that they're dealing with at this time. Um, otherwise, it seems uh, based on the kind of the feedback and the role that we've gotten at this point that we'd be able to fill that position or fill that board um, per the ordinance that was adopted earlier this year. So I, um, I had asked folks that if they were interested to apply by the end of the year. So um, that gives us uh, another week or two to get applications or uh, intention letters from them or interest letters. Yeah, I know I had actually Carter reached out to me and I had said just so that's kind of the advice I've been given to and anybody who's expressed some interest. And I know John, and, and, yeah. John Loftall had also said that he had filled one out here a number of months ago too and I haven't been able to follow up to see if that's the case. Yeah. But I did talk to him as well and he said that he had done that already. So. Um, yeah, at this point in time, it seems like there's enough. If we get extras or additional ones, then, then you got some thinking to do, Gary. Yeah. But at well, better uh, better that than the alternative. So. Right. And uh, you know, and I talked to John about the date of the sustainability board, and you know, when they would meet in the day. And I think what what we kind of came up with is after after we get the board set, is that uh, the guys would talk about it and, and set their own date of you know meeting time and and day of the week and stuff so to kind of fit everybody's schedules because I, I know everybody's super busy so right. it'd be nice to just to get that set so well and flexibility too and while at the same time avoiding conflicts with planning commission and other boards committees as well so um, I believe the intent would be to meet here um, like I said, we'll work with them to establish what night of the week that might be or time of the month. And um, likewise, too, even the frequency of those meetings, I believe the intent would be meet monthly, um, especially through the first six months or first year. Um, if we continue to fill agendas up and keep that thing moving along with enough uh, topics of interest, um, we'd probably continue to do that. And if we felt like there wasn't a need to meet monthly, we could dial that back to every other or something as well. So, um, yeah, there'll be some learning and some... Uh, a dynamic process in those in the onset to that board. So we'll kind of learn as we go. So it's a new one and yeah. we'll see where it goes and what level of topics we bring into it and we'll go from there. Thanks. Thank hey, you. Ready. Thanks, John. Yeah. <coughs> and I would note, you know, especially when we start talking about um, the fleet and the facilities, there is a, a fleet policy out there that lays out the or lays out the the committee, um, there's a facility plan out there, and I don't think it's in the details on actually who sits on on that committee, but if there's a desire to change that, we would have to just make that um, a part of those policy changes. I had two thoughts. One <clears throat> is uh, uh, the resource board or commission board. Um, like I brought up last year, I know Chad's on it, but again, I, I'll just reiterate what I brought up before. I just think that's a valuable one for every, it'd be nice if everybody had a chance to be on it, just because every year the projects are different, basically, and uh, there's a lot of understanding about how the process works. Um, we're not even getting minutes anymore, you know, because so the rest of the board doesn't or council doesn't see some of that information so i don't know where everybody else is at on that um i would be interested in serving on the uh facilities committee again just the same idea you know there's a lot of projects part of that kind of like the resource and <coughs> see what it's like yeah, I don't know. I I guess I I'd rather just keep it the same. Uh, I think the facility committee is is uh, nice where it's it's 
all the directors and um, I think it's kind of nice just to be able to it's easier to talk freely when there's just just them people there so <laughs> except then yeah. yeah we have council representation on all kinds of stuff so I think that's kind of a different different animal though so well is there a, is there a direction <laughs> from council at least specifically <coughs> on, I mean we know it's up to the mayor on the appointments of the the other standing committees is there a desire to bring something well we know the fleet committee has to be that policy has to be updated we're in, we're in the middle of doing that and so there'll be an opportunity to add um, a council person to that um, at that time otherwise I would need some direction from the council on the facility or quite frankly any direction from, from you guys on both of those but mm -hmm. Well, maybe we, can we get feedback from you maybe on that? Like, is it nice to not have a council rep on meetings like that? I mean. Can I answer that after my review? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think I, I, think I kind of covered that before. No, I, I'll say this. <laughs> it's, it, it, it comes down to the comfortability level of this board. Yeah. I mean, because all of those items come to the council at a set point in time. Right. So if you're not feeling comfortable when that information is coming to you, then we either need to change the, the process that we're doing it, or another option is to put a council member on that committee. Obviously, it's only one, or you could do two. You can't do, obviously, a quorum on that. Um, and so that's, that, that's where it, it falls on the count. It, staff, we work with all you guys and several other committees, and so if you guys want to be on any one of those committees, <coughs> That we're, we're not going to lose. Because I, I don't know how Sleep the rest of the it. council feels, but I've been very comfortable with the way it's been operating as is. I'm comfortable with that. Everyone on this, com on this committee is stellar. Oh, I'm totally I, comfortable, and everything they do comes back to us. So, and, and I feel I don't know how much the council would add since we're not day-to-day Operations. within your departments you know like right. correct none of us know what's going on in the buildings i mean you guys the staff is in the buildings you know or like the what vehicles are wearing out like i don't have a clue what john olson needs for a snow plow he does you know so mm -hmm. do we need to be there to hear him twice you know because we get the information you know when he needs something or you know i don't i don't know how much of an ad it'll be other than so why do we have resource? Sorry. Yeah. And that's really how resource got started. I don't think it's being uncomfortable. It's just understanding a little bit more, you know, what's going into it. And again, that's how resource allocation got started. You know, there are projects would come forward, you know, to us and they're not that there wasn't discussion, but there just wasn't more in-depth understanding of some of the background to it, and that's all. And resource has been great. <coughs> Maybe some of these facility things could be part of resource, you know, but again, I still think it's nice to have other people rotate through there to understand that. But Well, I mean, to answer your question, Steve, I think the resource allocation committee could function with adding another staff member and taking the council rep out of it. You know, it's just a nice connection, which the facilities and the fleet would be, it can be a nice connection, but I think it operates fine the way it is now. You know, in both ways it could operate, but yeah. Would there be any problem with the council members showing up, even though they're not appointed? It's a public meeting, so. <laughs> so. I mean, and you know, what we always offer is when we go out, you know, and we obviously we don't broadcast it, but if there's a desire from the council to be a part of that, we can always let the council know when they're going out and doing their field inspections on both the 
the fleet and the facility. Um, and if there's a desire to, to have part of the conversation, there's nothing wrong with that. I guess my interest is really there's a lot of big projects that are out there, facility <coughs> wise, and again, just trying to understand that a little bit more. And I think it's fair if, you know, as a council member who, either one of you, any one of you, if you're, if you're looking for more information on the project or on projects, that's well within your right to ask that. And we, I know staff would be more than willing to, to have you guys out and take a look at things and, and be a part of that. I think that's the way it should probably go down instead of muddying up these three committees, you know, they're changing them. I mean, I... If I have questions for Matt, I just email him and he emails me right back and I assume that's the way it works for everybody else on the council. I and mean, I I just feel comfortable with the way it's working. I I do too. I concur yeah, with that. I concur. Are you ready? We don't have to have any action no, on that. Discussion. Okay. Like, so you'll have, there'll be some actions that will come forward in, in January. All right. Sounds good. Uh, discussion on legislation, le legislative priorities for 2020. Mm -hmm. um, we haven't spent a, a lot of time. You know, I did send out a couple of emails. I got some minimal feedback. Um, so one of the things I did want to do was simply provide you with our 2019 priorities. They're, they're we had, I think, two items on that list that were that were addressed at the <coughs> one had to do with LGA. The other had to do with um, with the hands-free legislation that was approved. And so, you know, as we have done at least the last two years, as we're looking at doing this year three, we usually put together some sort of document like this that that we use either, you know, and then this gets emailed out to our our local representatives, and we also use it if we're heading down to the Capitol for anything. And so I wanted to bring that in front of you to see, um, I, I think, the things that weren't addressed. I don't know if there's a reason to take any of those off our list. Um, I guess that's the, the feedback I'm looking for the council. Um, and then if there's <coughs> anything to add to the list, um, I don't need to know right this moment because we'll look to have the council make formal action on it in January, but at least wanted to present kind of what we've had Last year, um, I said I had a little bit of feedback at adding something else, but then at least have it, the council have uh, some sort of discussion on it before we look at any formal action um, come January. If there's something out there that you'd like to see added to this list or maybe even taken off. So, a lot of these things we've talked about, you know, from the health aspect, we've talked about the, the 21 with uh, the device. Well, I've recently heard the federal government's looking at that, so it'll be interesting to see where that goes. Um, but, you know, some of these we've had discussions with, and some of them um, we've added for various different reasons. So. Um, I would say local government aid, we sh still should have that on there. I looked at the Coalition of Greater Minnesota Cities and their priorities and um, they're talking now about adding back um, inflation, inflation and, and population, population growth. growth. Uh, they also talk about, apparently there's talk about possible formula changes, so you know, that blurb in here about um, support the current formula unless any proposed changes, you know, are approved by city organizations. So. Sure. No, nope, and that's, that's no problem. So. And then, then the health, you know, we talk about changing the state law so the minimum age to purchase tobacco products would be increased to age 21. I'd, would people be all right with adding tobacco products and nic electronic nicotine delivery? Devices, you know, e-cigarettes, e and we um, yeah, thought that was in there. Uh, we talk about legislation that would make it more difficult for minors to participate yeah. in e-cigarettes, but not including it in. Oh, are you talking about including that in the increase to age 20? Right. 21. Yeah. So that's what's being talked about too, yeah. and that's the best way to do it. And then under 
Highway 15, you know, would it be nice to ask for some passing lanes? I know Kent isn't here tonight, but maybe John. I know they've done some studies on, yeah. on that. Um, you know, Steve, lanes. I was surprised that, you know, they did it from Kimball up to, you know, and they didn't, add, I thought they were gonna add some. Yeah. That's what I, I thought too. But. You know, and I drove it and it was like, well, oh, there's nothing here. Yeah. Could we could we put something in there on the highway for Highway Seven for some <coughs> turning lanes, bypass lanes too? I, I talked to Kent about that. You're talking about up by the winery. by the winery and stuff, yeah. But you know, they we can add it. It doesn't hurt. Yeah. I mean, we've kind of been told that they're probably not going to touch seven anymore, but yeah, right. it doesn't hurt for us to. Okay, well, so this is a so statement of policy that we want to make to our legislature and so yeah provide adding anything on yeah, along provide those lines. Turning and and bypass lanes for highway seven safety mm -hmm. I don't know. yeah and i think they are looking at some i thought um, i had heard where even possibly a roundabout at uh, winstead county road one is being oh. It could be, and, I, and I, maybe I don't I'm not, know where it's at. I might not be completely accurate when I talk about they're not going to. I don't think they're not going to four on, lane. <laughs> on making it a four lane. <laughs> right. I yeah. Like I said, I, I, I shouldn't yeah. say that they're not going to touch seven. I think they. You're right. I think from the safety aspect, they'll still be doing work on it. But I, and that's where the turn lanes, like what Gary brought up. Yeah. yeah. No, I can add those things. That's that's good. And on the skilled workforce, I don't know if that stayed in. Maybe that's why it was yellow. That's new. The yellow is new language. Sorry, I don't know if I defined that. We so. talked about it last year, but I guess I'm okay with it. But you know, the the whole Tiger Path thing is a partnership with the school, and you know, their employees are union. I think before we advocate for something like this, other than maybe the grant for the equipment that. Sure. We get the okay. It's all right with them too. You know, we have some time between now and our next meeting. I can uh, email Darren just to see, get some feedback from him on. Um, it's fine. There's a typo, just so you what? know. No way. Yeah. So. <laughs> Specifically, the city supports legislation. Oh, sp sports legislation. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> sports. Yep. And then I think yeah. item A is it's supposed to be where it says extends time revenue. I was wondering what, what is that? And I think it's supposed to be extended time revenue for oh, okay. CTA. You know, the, the example I found in Minnesota is for some charter schools where they can get some other sure. funding if they extend classes for specific things, you know. Anything else for Matt? Appreciate it. Thank you, guys. All right. Uh, new business. I'll tell. Unfinished business. Oh, I'm okay. Something like that. <laughs> Unfinished business. I'll tell corporate small cell facility co-location agreement. Mr. Paulson again. Good evening, Council. Mr. Mayor, uh, bringing forth the revisions to that co-location agreement with Altel Corporation from. Last Tuesday's meeting, um, we added language in Section 28, worked with Altel's attorney, their firm, to uh, draft language there. Um, feel that addresses the concerns that were uh, noted last Tuesday. Um, it looks have, like an attorney did it. So. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's pretty straightforward from a standpoint that a statute changes. Either party can revise and amend that agreement to... Uh, meet the requirements of the new statutory language. So, happy to answer any questions you may have. Why is it the same? Yep, nothing else has changed in there. Motion to approve. I'll second. Motion by Steve, second by Mary to approve. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank Carried. Thank you. Uh, New business. <laughs> resolution number 15114, resolution adopting 2020 seasonal temporary compensation plan. 
Uh, May and Council, this is one of our annual resolutions that we do for um, in regards to our temporary compensation plan. A lot of this has to do with our seasonal and temporary um, employees that, that we hire on a, obviously a seasonal basis. Um, one thing to note was that the minimum wage is going up, and so that's that was reflective within um, the revised um, pay grid. Um, and so that kind of takes place in that ST1, and then I think the rest of the grid was increased by about 25, by 25 cents to account for the in the minimum wage. I'll make a motion to approve it. Second. Motion by Chad, second by Dave to approve. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Uh, resolution number 15115, resolution adopting 2020 compensation plan and position classification table and pay grid. Uh, Mayor and Council, this is another one of our annual resolutions regarding the 2020 compensation plan. A um, couple things to note that have changed over from last year's plan. One is there's been a 2% uh, market adjustment to the pay grid. Once again, that's not an automatic 2% um, increase to employees, that's just um, shifting the grid by 2%. Um, if you were to happen to fall below the minimum, then you would have, <coughs> uh, I guess, an automatic um, pay increase. Otherwise, just a reminder that we still are based off of the, the performance-based um, system. So that's the, the one thing that's changed um, structurally within the the plan. Um, a couple things to to highlight when it comes to additions and changes within the classification and positions. Um, this plan does include the, the reclassification of the senior accountant to assistant finance director, um, and it does talk about changing the the part time HR administrative tech to that full time status at 34, 35 hours a week, and then we do note the addition of the 140, or I'm sorry, of the maintenance operator position. Um, and then we do note that uh, the other inspector is not being filled. It's still on the, the grid, but we're not, we're not filling that, that position. And so, um, you know, any actions that you were to take would have impacts on those too. And so I know there's been <coughs> a discussion about potentially delaying some of those hirings, and that would be, that be if that's the desire of the council, that should be a part of their I guess motion to do that on this one here. Yep, on this one right here. Okay. Um, I had a one suggestion or question. Um, kind of like we're keeping that 150 in there. Would it be okay to keep the senior accountant in there and leave that vacant? I guess I know we're talking about. Ruben, just mm -hmm. up to assistant, but say a year from now you yeah. get another job, and so we wouldn't add somebody yeah. right away. I don't. There's no problem with doing that. We've done that in the past for for multiple for multiple positions. So just that's, keep it there and leave yeah, it just right. for I mean placeholder. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You know, you never know what. Yeah. what I guess it saves a future. Yeah. Change our addition to the so there's no problem. I, yeah, we don't have any problems if that's something that you would keep in there and doesn't hurt us one bit. Yeah, and I guess you know I brought this up at our last meeting as far as you know Matt talked about that we really should have a meeting to talk about the levy early next year and not you know just that whole process and and Gary you mentioned too maybe there's um, some services that we're not going to do anymore and it's part of that discussion so maybe that impacts like that parks person and um, if we had that meeting early on you know, February or something, then it'd still be time to hire somebody if that uh, actually the outcome of that. Same with moving up the person, the HR person, uh, there's benefits and cost to that, and there's another way to do it. So all I'm saying is, you know, is there 
would we be all right just delaying those until we um, um, have that meeting? There might be a couple meetings. I don't know. I think there's stuff that has to be done, you know, before we would have have that meeting, right? Matt, well, our or, plan or, is to do it in February because a part of that conversation involves uh, the police department and and what we're planning on doing with uh, the new police station. So, I mean, <clears throat> we're getting we're doing we're in the middle of our due diligence period, um, and so my plans intentions are would be probably early February is when we would have that so however you guys blame these two positions is that we have that meeting I guess that's I what know. I'm asking is is there you know I mean, I know there ha there's work that you yeah. you got. Is it is it a that. is it a hardship? No, it's not a hardship. I, I I can't say if certain people might take it the wrong way. Um, it's not a we we we're operating right now under the the method that we are, and if we know it's going to be looked at and in two to three months from now, you know, I think that's a a communication that we have. And that's the communication I have with my staff is that it's it's been left on there. We've been advised to to wait till you know whatever it is, if it's March or April, to pursue anything. You know, that's the that's a conversation I then have with the, the directors. Well, even if we do delay it, the work's still gonna be there, correct? Well, I think that gets back to, to Steve's point. If we have this conversation and we decide through this process we're, we're either going to change some services or, you know, and through that we, we look at eliminating the positions, then that's probably a conversation. Okay, is there a need to still bring on yeah, that's these positions? Right on. Well, you might say it's going to take us a lot longer to figure this out. I would say it'll take longer than what you would want to do if we delay those positions. Um, I'd make a motion to approve the grid and not delay the positions, but keep Justin's old position like in the grid just as a placeholder. I'll second that motion. Motion by Chad, second by myself to leave the Grid in the positions as is with Justin's, right? Yeah. Any other discussion on that? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Roll call? Aye. Aye. Nay. Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Uh, res <coughs> resolution number one five one two three resolution adopting 2020 fee schedule a <clears throat> mayor and council uh, we just discussed this briefly at the, the last meeting um, there wasn't any changes to um, to the fee schedule from the last meeting we've noted the changes that have occurred from the, the plan that was adopted in 2019. I'll make a motion to approve that. Second. Motion by Mary, second by Dave to approve. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Can I just say one thing with yes. that? Yes. Um, I just hope that this can be part of that other discussion in February to, and, you know, is there a policy where you know, looking at other increases on a more regular basis. Just leave yep. it at that. Uh, resolution number one five one 
2020-30 resolution adopting 2020 general fund budget. Hey, good evening, Mr. Mayor, council yeah. members. Um, let me see if I can get this full page view here. Uh, slightly different than my desktop. <laughs> Okay, is that too small? Yeah, read there. I don't get to use my arrows on this. Anybody? I think that just. Um, page view. I apologize. Well. We'll try to get through it. So um, what's in your packet tonight is three scenarios <coughs> for the general fund budget. Uh, the budget staff is proposing is the same one that was pre presented at the Truth and Taxation meeting last week. And that budget is balanced with a 2.9% tax levy increase. Just a couple highlights quickly on that budget. Uh, for the revenues, our LGA increased 168000 our Hutch, uh, Hutch Utilities pilot increased 192,000. And as a reminder, this is the final year of that three-year phased-in increase on the Hutch uh, pilot. So we're at the maximum uh, percentage of their operating revenue for that pilot in 2020. And then we did decrease our self-insurance transfer uh, that, that we use as our HSA funding within the general fund. As you may recall, uh, we're using a five-year phase-out of that funding. Uh, we're in our second year of phase-out, roughly 20% each year is being phased out. After the uh, fifth year, the general fund will uh, fully finance those HSA contributions. Over on the expenditure side, we have our employee performance reviews increasing the budget about 200000 Health insurance uh, is increasing about 64000 based on a 7% premium increase. And then we've added 45,000 of new expense to the budget this year for the Upanor tax abatement. Uh, that abatement can last as long as 15 years or up to a maximum abatement amount of 902,000. Um, so and that's that's the budget that uh, we reviewed at Truth and Taxation meeting. Andy? Yep. As far as the abatement, can you just explain that What's actually being abated? It kind of works like TIF. Um, Just for the audience. TIF, right? we're able to capture county, school, and city taxes. We can capture it all, and you can you end up seeing more revenue over the course of that TIF district. But it's just Tax, on the increase of Just on the increase of value, value. created on that parcel. We're still getting money. We're, yep. The that way base it was. value we receive the taxes on. And with Upanor, I believe that base value is like 4.9 million. So we're still receiving our full city taxes on that 4.9 million. But the value created above that is where they're receiving those taxes back. And they're only receiving back the ta uh, tax on the city portion, not the county or the school. So that's where it differs a little bit from tax increment financing. In order to capture the county and school taxes, those two entities would have had to sign on board with this abatement as well, and we didn't go down that road. You're correct. This was set up purely for the new value created. Open our came in. So there still is a base tax we're collecting. So. Right. And my expectation is this abatement may increase a little bit over the next couple of years as they add more value, possibly expand. Mm -hmm. um, so we may see this creep up even further. But, but for now, this 45000 is based on the value I did receive from the county um, assessor's office. Uh, not so the again, assessor. this is just their tax dollars that they would have paid ab above and beyond. They, they pay that, and it just get, goes back to them. Or right. Something. They actually have to pay their full tax bill, and then we just reimburse them for that abated portion. Yep. And that's why we have to we have to put it in as an expense into our budget. We're gonna see that tax revenue come in into, a, into this tax line item, revenue line item, but then it goes out as that miscellaneous expenditure. 
So I, I do have two other scenarios of the budget in the packet, and those all uh, both deal with this levy stabilization that we talked about at the last council meeting. And scenario one basically levies 50,000 of additional tax revenue, and then in return we're shifting 50,000 of LGA out of the general fund and into the capital projects fund, and it'll be reserved over there uh, for future tax levy stabilization needs. And then scenario two is very similar, except we take our tax levy up to the amount that we certified back in September, which was a 4.5% uh, tax increase on the general fund, which is an additional 79,000 above and beyond what our truth and taxation budget levy was. And then similar uh, to the last scenario, we would then shift out 79,000 of LGA to the capital projects fund to be reserved for uh, any levy stabilizations out in the future years. And I'll just add to, to, to that. Right now we don't have a fund established and so that's why it's going into the LJ could put in the capital improvement. There's really any type of fund you could put in. We've, we've consistently put the extra LJ into that capital project fund so that's why we're moving it there. It doesn't mean that somewhere down the road we can't create a fund if that's the route we go or designate it to, to someplace else but it's going to be reserved for the purpose of a if we go down that road of a levy stabilization right so, so this this slide here shows um, four different tax levies up in the upper left is what we certified to the county back in september with a total tax uh, increase of 3.1 and the upper right is what we proposed at the Truth and Taxation <coughs> meeting with a total levy increase of 2.1%. And then the two levy stabilizations on the bottom um, resulting in either a 2.8 or a 3.1% total uh, tax levy increase. And that stabilization one, that's basically what we reviewed in November before the actual Truth and Taxation meeting because there were some other reductions Fairly after that. Fairly close, right. Pretty close, yeah. Yep. yep, and the levy, or the stabilization, stabilization number two gets you back to your September levy. Um, so then we look at the impact on our median home value, and this is a little different than what you've seen in the past, just because I've got the levy stabilizations in here as well, but as we've talked at Truth and Taxation and other meetings, just from the value going up alone, option one shows that the median home value would likely see a city tax increase of $19, even if we don't raise our levy. And then as we look at our truth and taxation budget or the budget we're proposing tonight highlighted in blue, they'd see about a $38 increase in city tax. And then for the stabilization scenarios uh, one and two in that option three and four column, they'd be seeing 44 and $47 increases in city tax so not too significant but in all four scenarios the tax rate is decreasing with our proposed budget we're uh, lowering the tax rate by about 0.7 percent and then in that second levy stabilization it's pretty much a, a push from the 2019 staying flat uh, I'm going to skip past the five-year budget and just touch on the G, uh, LGA allocation. This is the history going back to 2010, which was the last year where we used 100% of our LGA in the general fund. And then in 2011, we broke out 60% of that to the capital projects fund. So this shows you how it's being utilized. And in uh, 2019, uh, you can see the breakdown there in the capital projects fund. Of that 1.3 total, uh, 1.3 million total LGA, we use 700,000 in the facility plan, 375,000 for the miscellaneous infrastructure maintenance plan, and then we had 226,000 that was undesignated uh, that we use for some of our miscellaneous uh, capital improvement items. Uh, but for 2020, what staff is proposing is uh, shifting some of that. Well, first, keeping the general fund. As is the entire increase at 168,000 into the general fund, that brings that up to about 49% of the LGA in the general fund. And then over in the capital projects fund, what we're proposing is to shift <coughs> 75,000 out of that undesignated pot of money, 
and put 50,000 into the facility plan as a funding source for future playground replacements, and then putting 25,000 to the miscellaneous infrastructure maintenance uh, plan just as those needs are increasing there as well. So basically just shifting 75,000 around. But the uh, two levy stabilization scenarios were actually bringing more LGA into the capital projects fund. And th this sheet might show that we're using it for miscellaneous CIP, but technically we'd be putting it aside for uh, future levy stabilization. But you can see the, that far right column does grow by 50,000 for the uh, first scenario and 79,000 for the second scenario. That's uh, the result of that. Uh, those levy stabilizations. Um, so as we that, um, <clears throat> I think just to mention that in the miscellaneous column after this year, that thirty thousand dollar Dakota Rail um, payment will end. So that fund will basically free up right an extra thirty thousand within. Right. Exactly. Yep. Yeah, that's currently being funded by that miscellaneous LGA. So as we look at the five-year forecast, I, I know we look at this every year, and I, I changed it up slightly for tonight's meeting. Um, but the one thing I want to stress is that this should be an indicator that we use for discussion purposes and, and planning purposes. Um, this is something that the bond rating agency looks at every year and actually they, they want to see it. I, I physically send them this analysis because they, they want to see that we're forward thinking and looking out in the future. So I changed it up a little tonight. Uh, what you've normally seen is a 3% tax levy at the very top because that's kind of what uh, council has always used as a guideline or at least that's my understanding. And then I always showed a deficit for the net revenue of the, of the shortfall for tonight. I levied the full taxes that would balance the budget. So for 2020, we have a 2.9% tax levy. Uh, 2021, it goes up to 4.6. And these numbers are, I'm sorry, are in the yellow highlights. And then we go up to <coughs> 6.1 in 2022, and then it kind of stabilizes in that mid fives to low fives after that. So that's what we're looking at with this forecast, which I'll, I'll, I'll say is a conservative forecast. Uh, the expenses might be going up a little more than um, they, they have been, um, and the revenues maybe not as much as they have been, but it, it's good for discussion purposes. But and we're assuming no significant changes in staffing. No significant changes, right, right. Um, and over on the, you know, just to kind of deviate once on the revenue side, the, the pilot is now at the maximum amount of 4.5% of their revenues. And it, our pilots actually capped at 2% increases every year going forward. So if they have a good year, we're not going to see as good a year on our pilot. We're capped at a 2% increase, which is about $38,000 uh, in 2020 dollars. Um, so the area, it's hard to see. I think it's blue on there. It's gray on my screen. The area in blue is our le levy stabilization uh, scenarios. So as you can see, we'd be levying 1% and 1.6% additional taxes in 2020. And then that can help us in a future year. And I've used 2022 in this, in this model, just because that was the year of, of larger increase in our tax levy to 6.1%. So that would get us a more level uh, tax increase from that uh, under scenario one, going from 3.9 to 4.6, 5.1, and then it kind of stabilizes at uh, the mid five. So that's uh, kind of the theory behind this stabilization. Uh, the green box below that is the impact wages and benefits will have on our tax levy if we have no new revenue and expense, other expenses stay flat, we'd be expecting to raise the, the levy five and a half to six percent a year just to <coughs> maintain with wages and benefits. And then the, the bottom box is uh, fund balance. What I expect will be around that 55.6 percent fund balance after 2020. And just to show you, our, our city policy is that we should carry a minimum of 40 percent fund balance, which equates to about 5.5 million in the 2020 column. And we're actually carrying about 2.1 million uh, above and beyond that 40% minimum. 
And then we're also carrying 766 above a 50% fund balance. And just to give you perspective, 1% of that fund balance equates to about $138,000. So that, the fund balance stays fairly steady across this five-year plan just because there's really no surprises in here. I've, I've just kept it steady, no major changes. Um, so with that said, just kind of wanted to back up a little and talk about the levy stabilization. It's really just a short-term redistribution <coughs> of this tax levy to be used in, in a future year to help with any large tax increases. So I guess the question um, whether we need this or not falls back on council. And I guess the biggest question to me is council, is council willing to raise it the future tax levies five and six percent as it shows we might have to do in those out years. We may not have to, and this is all based on estimates, but if, if council's willing to raise the levy five and six percent, then maybe this uh, levy stabilization is a good idea and it'll help ease us into those larger increases. But if council says, you know, we're, we're only looking at three and four percent, we don't want to go higher, then staff's going to have to look at the budget and, and make that budget fit within what you guys want for a tax levy increase. Um, Couldn't we, the stabilization be a part of getting to that 3% or? It, it could, um, but we, we, I just wanted to quick note, we do have uh, some other techniques as well. Uh, as you saw on, the, on this slide, we have 55% fund balance. You know, uh, that's also an avenue you can go to help stabilize if needed. Just uh, knowing that uh, one-time money, sh we shouldn't rely on one-time money every year. It should just be used when absolutely needed, in my mind. Um, but we also have that LGA over in the Capital Projects Fund that we looked at on the last slide that could be tapped into if absolutely needed, too. So it's up to council. I mean, we, we certainly can raise tax levy, but we do have other options. And... I guess I'm going to leave it at that and open it up for discussion. I guess I like the middle one, number one. Um, there's an opportunity to do something. Um, you'd have 50000 in LGA to be able to transfer over plus whatever is set aside. So... so. And it's, it could be a start to a fund. Um, you mentioned using fund balance, and the um, what would a bond agency think about that after a while? I mean, once in a while, probably okay, but... Uh, right, once in a while. Um, they're generally okay with it if we have a policy and we're forward-looking and maybe planning out like, oops, like we're doing now. That's where that stabilization policy, a levy stabilization could be a part and, of that. And I would note that, you know, if, if it's our desire to start up a, a rate stabilization fund, we should then craft a, a policy that would follow that, that would detail what that is, when that gets used, how that gets funded, you know, et cetera. Andy, could you put those four options back on the screen? Yeah. There you go. Thank you. Yeah. And essentially... In a roundabout way, uh, by carving these monies out to the capital projects fund, it's you could look at it as, as an extension of general fund fund balance. You're just putting it in a different location. <coughs> so that's why I used the general fund balance as another alternative. Guess what? What are you comfortable with, Andy? I'm comfortable with what you guys want. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, staff has yeah. staff has pr presented the council with a balanced budget. The, the question at hand mm -hmm. that was raised at the last meeting is, do you want to start with this year's budget a rate stabilization fund? We provided some options to do that. Um, this is really the policy side that it's up to you guys. We, we've 
presented a budget that's balanced. We provided you with three or yeah, with three other options that are, are balanced. So it's it's not it's not impacting what we budgeted for 2020. It's impacted whatever policy and fund balances you guys want to create going forward. I feel more comfortable at the 2.1%. Um, I think publicly it looks really bad to levy more than what we need to, and I get what it does in the future, Steve. But I think if we want to go down that road in the future and levy for potentially more than what we need to balance our budget, we should come up with a policy that addresses that. I think it's just shows a little prudence. I mean, instead of spending every cent of new money that we're getting of LGA and the uh, pilot, we're actually setting some aside to help next year or the year after. So, and it's, I mean, in November, the end of November, our council meeting was that that's what the number was until, you know, the final some final tweaks got done to get <coughs> down to 2.1. So. Well, I get that, but I, I we've had five-year budgets that have looked real bad, you know, before we get all of our information. You know, I mean, it's a very, there's so many moving targets now. You know, I mean, talking three years out, like, we don't know who's going to be working here or what kind of retirements we're having or what kind of LGA we're going to be getting. I mean, there are so many moving targets that the five-year budget, like Andy said, is more for discussion at this point. And is it important to look to the future? It absolutely is. But I, I don't feel we should get too cranked up about stuff that has happened, is gonna happen in four years when, I mean, our budget changed in two months here. You know, I mean, staff did a great job cutting things down. And I think staff every year does that. You know, they, they, they generally get a vibe on what the council wants, you know, and then they, they make it happen every year, you know, and the budgets, they do a great job with their budgets and they don't throw money around when they don't need to. And yeah. I, I have confidence that we'll be able to do it again. You know, I mean, especially like you were around during the unallotment years, you know, and I mean, those five-year budgets look bad, you know, I mean, that, that was an ugly time to be around in these chairs and mm -hmm. and but look what we did you know staff wise and and i so get I'm, that I'm i mean those are extreme at, times yeah. you know, and we're not looking at that right now but i mean we had to make up big time money then and we're not talking about that much money here and i just feel that if we want to go down this road we shouldn't do it right now like we should come up with some policy about fund balances and you know, LGA policies and that kind of thing and do it that way and not start when we are, are looking at a pretty good levy compared to what other cities are doing. You know, and I just think... I'd say 2.8 is still a lot well, better. And, I, I, and I, I get what you're saying about looking out four years, five years, but we're looking at just 2021, the next year. And, I don't want to see a 4.6 or 5. <coughs> and I would be shocked if we see that. I, I just don't see that happening. You know, I mean, I, I'm fully confident that staff will be able to come up with a budget if we tell them it's got to be 3.5% or whatever it is. I'm fully confident staff will be able to do it because they always do. You know, I, I appreciate that. I will just <laughs> caution. No new money. There, there's a decisions that go with that. and. Yeah, and I get we're gonna have right, right, we're gonna have right. to talk about that, and right. and I I think the way it'll happen is like, so say you guys can't just do it without a change of service, then you'll come to us and say, hey, this is what we're gonna have to do, you know, and then that's when we're gonna have to earn our big bucks, I guess, and talk about service, you know. But it's not realistic for people to expect taxes to never go up and services to never change because we always add stuff and we never take anything away, and that's not realistic so it's well, fun if it happens that way which it kind of does all the time but I mean you know the amount of service that we provide for what it costs them is is real reasonable I think I agree you know and <coughs> I, I know it, 
I think, uh, John, what are you, you out, what, four or less people plowing snow, snow now than what you had a few years back? Ten years ago, yeah. You know, so, I mean, our services seem like they, our staff kind of works that out. So. Yeah, I, I just want to add one thing as well. Um, you know, we, we cut uh, 50, 60,000 out of the budget and we don't have a lot of cushion, a lot of fluff out there, but that's where we've been making the budgets work the last couple of years, stressing with departments to budget for a normal year. That's what uh, the message Matt and I have been giving the departments. So we've been trimming those expense budgets somewhat. Um, so I fully expect that our five-year plan is going to be a little more accurate, Chad. Um, and I also expect we might see uh, smaller surpluses as well just because of that. That's what I was going to ask, Andy. You know, as we tighten up the budgets, there's going to be less of a reserve or maybe uh, um, something at the end of the year. So, you know, when you look at that fund balance, you know, 40 to 50 percent, I mean, if <laughs> That's based on the next year's budget, and if there's less money going into the reserves, that's probably going to go down a little bit more if we're tight. Well, and you're seeing that here it goes down slightly. I think I've assumed about a 1.25, one and a quarter percent surplus in these out years just because I think we're going to be skinnier. Um, hope we do better than that, but I think you would have to get down less than a percent to really see your your fund balance drop uh, further than this. But if we don't want the five, six percent levies, then we probably will have less of a surplus and those fund balance percentages will start going down. That's definitely a possibility. Just to move it along, I'll make a motion to approve the levy stabilization number one budget. That would be a setting up 2.8. 2.8 to the general. Um, yeah, uh, I'm sorry. Um, three, 3.9% well, to the general fund. 2.7% overall for the general fund and debt funds. And then 2.8% overall city tax impact. Motion by Steve for that. Is there a second? Motion dies. I'd make a motion at the 2.1% proposed levy. I'll second that. Motion by Chad, second by Mary for a 2.1 total impact. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Roll call, <coughs> Mary? Aye. Aye. Nay. Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Uh, resolution number 1513. Mayor, may I? Uh, oh. Yes. I need to leave. Okay. So I want to say Merry Christmas to everybody. Be safe. All right. Have a good Christmas, Steve. I don't like doing this when I'm talking about you. <laughs> did, did I bore you, Dave? <laughs> <laughs> Not intentionally, actually. <laughs> hey, Andy. Yeah. Just thanks for putting up, yeah. or putting together the You're different welcome. scenarios to. Consider, so. it, and just because uh, um, <coughs> with the stabilization rate doesn't mean we can't have those conversations no, with I policy. Agree. And yep, I agree. And, and I think we should. You know, I just didn't want to yep. do that. This part of this. So. Right, I and think, I agree uh, with that. I think that will be a. And we uh, need that meeting yeah. where we all sit down and. Well, and I think that's go over that. you know because some of what we've talked about when we talk about staffing services. Um, there's going to be a reality that that's going to be tied to a tax levy, and so we're going to—that's all going to have to be a part of that conversation. So and that will help 
in the future as well. So. All right. Uh, resolution number 15131, resolution adopting the 2020 general fund and debit service final tax levies. Okay, Just Pete. for I guess for the council's knowledge, basically the budget that you approved is the equivalent to the 2.1 you obviously just highlighted. So, so just I'll make the motion to approve this one too. <laughs> second. Motion <laughs> <laughs> by Chad, second by Mary to approve. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a bunch of resolutions. Can we do these? We got to do them separate or? If it's a desire of the council, you can do them all at, at once when you get to that point. What do you guys think? Do them all at once? I'm good with that. I think All right. so. We have resolution number 15124, resolution approving the 2020 liquor fund budget. Resolution number 15125, resolution approving 2020 water fund budget. And resolution number 15126, resolution approving 2020 sewer fund budget. Resolution number 15127, resolution approving 2020 stormwater fund budget. Uh, resolution number 15128, resolution approving 2020 refuge fund budget. And resolution number 15129, resolution approving 2020 compost fund budget. Ask one question. Yes, I think we've got asked before, but you know we're putting a little bit more on the sales tax, which just goes to the debt. But you're still comfortable with the, the way the numbers are looking. Yeah. Right, yeah. Um, we're trending to about uh, seven hundred eighty thousand <coughs> for each fund this year. <coughs> and our budget, I believe, is at seven twenty-five. Yeah, seven thirty-seven. Yeah, that, that's the excise tax, I'm sorry. Oh, yep. sure. So together, I think it's 725 for the sale, local sales tax, then the difference is the excise tax from the car dealerships. I guess, you know, we can go through every one of the budgets. Um, we don't have to. Um, it's, nothing has significantly changed. Um, it's, I guess it's up to the, to the council. Please. Really, the only changes were on the refuse and compost side, and I pointed those out in my board action form. I can go through them if you want. How about just running through them in case somebody's watching on TV? Yep. Okay, uh, for the liquor fund, I'll just hit the summary here. Our revenues are expected to go up 1.8%. Our expenditures <coughs> expected to go up 1.4%. Uh, we're looking at a net loss of uh, a little over 102,000. And then a cash negative cash flow for the year of just under twenty thousand, and we expect to finish the year with a cash balance of about eighty thousand two hundred twelve. And just a couple notes: the water and sewer debt falls off after twenty twenty, so the liquor fund will save about one hundred twenty eight thousand after twenty twenty. And then the transfer to the general fund is at that five hundred thousand dollar level, which is we've been at that for a few years now, but. And I would and I would just know if somebody's looking at this going, well, the liquor store is losing money. Well, 500000 of that is going to the city. Um, and generally, we've been conservative with our budgets. To, right. to, and so that's a plan. It's not, it's not because it's financially being hurt. Like I said, we've got 500000 that we're taking out of that to give to ourselves. So. Yeah. Next year, I mean, in 2021, when that debt falls off, it some point do we have to start putting money f funding their fund balance a little better for well, capital that, that was something candace and i and matt have talked about what does she need for capital improvements over the next several years so she's going to be looking at that but she doesn't think she needs a whole lot i think her biggest concern was the wall between her and the police mm -hmm. department right. when they start taking that down sure. what impact is that going to have on her uh, the services up on the rooftop are all separate, so no impacts there. Um, so at this point in the short term of five years, she's not looking at a whole lot of, of needs there. Otherwise. But I think it'd be smart for us to to put something away for those. You know, even if it's not five years, we know eventually it's going to be there. So. 
All right, and then over on the water side, revenue is going up 2.4%, expenses going up 12.7%, looking at a net loss of a, uh, about 1,483,000, um, and a negative cash flow for the year of about 322,000. And that, uh, that's mainly due to some extra or, uh, above normal capital expenditures in this fund for 2020. We're looking at 830,000. And uh, the majority of that's related to the Main Street project. So that's putting us in a negative cash, cash position for the, for the year. But balance-wise, we're... Balance-wise, very healthy. Uh, it's actually about 167% of our target cash balance. Uh, sewer fund, revenue's going up 2.4%. Expenses, 5.1% increase. Negative uh, net revenue of uh, 1278000 Positive cash flow in this fund of about 71000 for the year and, and a very healthy cash balance of over $6.3 in this fund. And I didn't mention it in the water fund, but water and sewer, no rate changes for the year. Last rate change was 2011. And then likewise in the stormwater fund, which is next, we do have a 3% uh, increase to the rates in that fund. Uh, that's that's uh, what precipitates that 2.2% increase in revenues, 13.3% increase in expenditures, a net loss of 406,000 for the year, negative cash flow of 181,000. Um, and again, uh, large capital expenditures in this fund, and that's mainly to finish off uh, connecting those streets around the Linden Park Pond, connecting those streets to the, to the pond itself. Um, but still a healthy cash balance of 800000 or so. Over in the refuse fund, revenue is going up 2.6% with no rate increases to the customers. Our expenditures are staying uh, flat, uh, just down slightly. Uh, negative net revenue of 166,000, negative cash flow of 26,000, mainly due to capital expenditures, and then we should end the year with uh, close to 1.4 million in cash balance. So again, healthy. Uh, one addition or one change to this fund was adding 15,000 for a consultant to review our source separated process and kind of help us with our long-term vision of where that's going to go. So that was the big revision within this fund. And again, rates haven't gone up. Rates haven't re increased since 2008 in that fund. And over in the compost fund, uh, we did have some revisions in here. The Creekside staff uh, took another look at their production model. Uh, they anticipate losing one big customer that uh, uh, they brought down their uh, revenue about 88,000 because of the loss, potential loss of that customer. But they did uh, increase their bulk sales about 26,000 just because Bitcoin is, is uh, really selling well this year. And they did just crush their pile of, of asphalt and, and concrete, so we should have a good supply and not run out of Bitcoin next year. Um, so revenues are down about 0.6%. Expenditures are up about 21.4%. Uh, we expect a net loss of about 706,000. And then a cash deficit for the year of about 380,000. Uh, still finishing with the cash above 2 million. Uh, the big item in here is in the capital outlay. They're looking to replace their compost screener with an estimated cost of 350,000. Right now we've plugged in the budget to pay cash, uh, but we're going to determine uh, early next year whether we actually finance that or not. Perhaps it's an interfund loan with the refuse. We'll have options later. But if we do finance that, that'll just help our cash position within this fund. Um, so I guess that's all I have. All the funds are doing well. Healthy cash balances, healthy fund balances. Uh, unless you guys have any questions, that's all I had for you tonight on these. I'll make a motion to approve all six. Second. <clears throat> Motion by Chad, second by Steve to approve all six resolutions. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Thanks, Andy. Oh. Uh, resolution number 15132, resolution adopting the 2020 HRA final tax levy. 
All right, with the HRA and EDA, they're both, their levies are limited by state statute and they have formulas uh, with a small percentage uh, multiplied against the city's estimated market value. And you can see that kind of in the middle of this sheet here. Our estimated market value is a little over a billion dollars and their percentage is 0.185% uh, of that. So for, for 2020, the HRA's levy limit per state uh, statute is 192,993, and that's what the HRA board is requesting for their levy. That would uh, represents about a 3.7% increase from the last year's levy, 2019. So tonight, uh, I'm asking that you approve the HRA levy for 2020 at 192,993 as recommended by the HRA board. Make a motion to approve it as presented. Second. Motion by Chad, second by Mary to approve. All favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, carried. Uh, resolution number 15133, <coughs> resolution adopting the 2020 EDA final tax levy. Just like the HRA, this, uh, the EDA has a levy limit and that is, uh, equates to $189,133 for 2020. And that's what the EDA board is requesting. Um, this again represents a 3.7% increase over the 2019 levy. Uh, so for tonight, I'm asking that you approve uh, the EDA final levy at 189,133 as recommended by the EDA board. I'll make a motion to approve that. Second. Motion by Mary, second by Steve to approve. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Um, approve um, five-year capital improvement plan. Okay, the, the plan that's in front of you tonight uh, is pretty much the same <coughs> that you saw back before the truth and taxation meeting with, with two additions. And those were uh, basically projects that were slated for 2019 that didn't get done, so I pushed them into 2020. Uh, one of them is for the Dakota Trail improvements, 80,000, uh, and, and the other is for the Wayfinding Interpretive Signage Project, $10,000. So both of those, 90,000 total being funded out of the Community Improvement Fund, which was how we had that uh, reflected on the 2019 CIP. Um, so those are the only two changes, and uh, the only comment I really have on this is, you know, this, this plan is good for city planning standpoint, but it's also a requirement of our an annual bonding process, and just like our uh, five-year budget look, the bond rating agency looks at this as well. And it, it also is beneficial when it comes to financing options for us especially when we start considering the police station. Fine, yeah. Yes, I was just going to ask um, <coughs> one, you know, we, you're going to update the fleet program and analysis or whatever you call it. And, so if that gets updated, because that potentially might shift some of the funding, what vehicles get um, what, when, right? Mm -hmm. So just keep moving that forward and bring that back when it's ready. Sure. And then two, um, the wastewater plant that's got some sizable improvements in 21 and 22, three and a half million dollars. And I was thinking, you know, we, like with the pool and even when the wastewater plant was expanded a few years ago, um, we had consultants come in and explain some of that to the council. It'd be nice to have a workshop at some point, uh, understand what all is being done. And sure. it's a lot of money, obviously. So. Right, I know um, Kent and, and Tim Gracky and John, they've had um, consultants helping them on that yeah. regard too and I think that would be something good just from staff standpoint too um, to understand what's really going on there so, so if that consultant could idea. come in and be a part of that yeah I know I think they're kind of the last touches of that so yeah. I, I would encourage Steve I think especially because I know there's been some larger ones that have been added to it and so it'd be good for all of us to 
have understanding of that. So, otherwise, I'll make a motion to approve. I'll second that. Motion by Steve, second by Chad to approve the five year capital improvement plan. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Uh, we have. Uh, the City of Hutchinson Financial Report and Investment Report for November 2019 and the Public Arts Commission minutes from November 13th, 2019. John, you have anything else for us tonight? No, sir. Andy? Nothing more. <laughs> How about Justin? I'm good. Okay. <laughs> Mark? Christmas and a safe new year. All right, Chad? Uh, I don't have anything extra. Um, everybody can have fun celebrating whatever holidays they want. So. <laughs> Star Wars? Is that, is that, is that politically yeah. correct <laughs> statement there yeah. or what? Yeah, and like with the Star Wars premiere tomorrow, you know, I mean, that's, that's as big as it gets here. <laughs> oh, I, I thought you got your tent ready to go set up. <laughs> Mary? I just want to wish everyone happy holidays, mm -hmm. enjoy your families, and blessings to all of you out there. Steve. Uh, yeah, again, just wishing everybody Merry Christmas, happy holidays, and safe New Year's. Um, you know, talking about the facility thing, and I just wanted to acknowledge the work that JJ and the committee did on the library. Restoration, that soffit—it's really a work of art, you know. That whole <laughs> building, you know, the little details that are in there, and they really brought that back to life. And then the new restrooms <coughs> are, you know, and it's nice. historically correct. <clears throat> mm -hmm. and so, just thanks for that. Um, I know in January, I think the bids are going to be coming in for the rec center. I was just wondering if the architect could come in and be a part of that discussion, go through you know, those with us. Yeah, that's the desire. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, that's all I got. Okay. <coughs> Matt, you're up. Um, Couple things to note. Uh, you know, usually we put the budget memo in when we do our, our budgets. Obviously, we were had a couple of things that were still out there, and so I'll get that probably completed here either tomorrow or Monday. Get that out to <clears throat> to the council. That will be included in our budget book then. Um, I know I said don't email, but the, the league is having an elected officials institute um, conference. That's kind of for those that have had experience. That's January 24th and 25th in Plymouth. If any of you are interested in attending, just let me know and Melissa and I will work with you in getting signed up for that. And then just a, another quick reminder that city offices would be closed half a day on Christmas Eve, all day on Christmas Day, and then all day on New Year's Day. So it's a reminder for everybody. Yeah. Merry Christmas to everyone. Um, do we, don't we have a, maybe I missed it, but if I did, uh, for first of the year thing? Okay. Oh, yeah, for city elections. Yeah, for, so we'll do that at okay. your first meeting in 2021. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. So. All right. Um, I just want to uh, say thank you to staff, John, and the CAP deal, I think, is going to be a great thing for Hutchinson. Mm -hmm. And I know uh, everybody's done a lot of work with it, Mark and, and John, you know. Um, so, I think it's an exciting project for this community. I, I think it's it'd be it's going to be great. But uh, I hope they have a bus take everybody over to the aquatic yeah. center and. Uh, well, otherwise they can use the service. We've got some taxi services in town too. So well, they should be strapping young people. They can just go for a jog. And, <laughs> no, <that's true. laughs> it's not that far. Yeah. No. Um, and this the. Uh, thing that uh, I handed out a letter from a resident from Hutchinson talking about the cat situation in town. So you guys, uh, I don't know if anybody else got any feedback, but uh, I just, yeah, just 
for the public, this one writer suggested, you know, doing fundraisers for it. So if there's people out in the public that are really supportive and want to do something, by all means, you know, it'd be like with the dog park and, um, oh, well, you know, it, it, uh, we had somebody take the bull by the horns for the dog park. So, I mean, right. you know, you know, and I, and I think I shared this last time too, you know, I've been approached in the past from individuals who are interested in some sort of a sanctuary. And, and, and I've always said, if, if, you, if you get up and running and if you're, you know, I don't know if there's certification to state and, and legit, we would be more than willing to consider, you know, potentially, Taking some of our animals to there, or even you know having that as an option for us, I think that would be a great option for the, the community. So, so otherwise, uh, everybody be safe in their travels and have a good Christmas. Motion to adjourn. Second. Motion by Steve. Second by Chad to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. <laughs>